Kurt Frost Teal Company called ISCOR. One of my trainers uh, running the workshop introduced just one afternoon the random word. That afternoon they generated 21,000 new ideas just using that one technique. So these processes can be used quite formally, quite deliberately. It's not sort of a matter of sitting by a stream and playing rock music or something. They can be used quite formally, quite deliberately. So these are aspects of lateral thinking. We're coming to question time now. I'll just put down a number for those of you who are interested in looking into these things further. It's an outfit called Indigo who do formal training on these things and the telephone number is um, 792 48760 and they can arrange trainers or have sessions I don't do personal training anymore okay so at this point it's 1 minute 27 seconds to go and then we'll have question time so basically the point about thinking is we've done nothing about thinking for 2,400 years since the Greek Gang of Three and by far the biggest problem in the world is not global change, uh, war global warming or climate change but poor thinking, poor thinking and far too much judgment politically we judge at the end rather than design for instance in the recent uh, Israel-Gaza situation design solution would be that all the countries which set up Israel should pay the Palestinians a grant of three billion dollars a year but every time they fight a rocket at Israel they lose 50 million. That changes the whole situation. Design not judgment but because of our habits of thinking we rush to judgment, recognition, judgment and so on not enough design, design in the way forward. Okay, 28 seconds and we'll have questions. So. To ask questions. I don't know. Well, thank you, Edward, for that absolute masterclass in, in new ways of thinking. Um, can I put it immediately to the floor? We have a roving mic. If you could say who you are and where you're from, and a, and a succinct question or comment for Edward. Okay, gentleman there. Uh, very simply, why do you think this hasn't changed for two and a Could half Could you say who years? you are and where Sorry, you're Nick from? Sorry, Nick Searle from Argent. Um, uh, just why do you think this hasn't changed for two and a half thousand years? Uh, and what is it about humanity that you think it can be successful now? Well, the reason I think it hasn't changed is we were very complacent, very happy with it. Um, my best story about complacency is a skyscraper and a fellow jumps off the top to commit suicide and as he passes a third floor window he says so far so good <laughs> we've been very self-satisfied with our thinking and our thinkers and philosophers have said it's pretty wonderful and we do have a very good thinking system but the difficulty is that when the church middle ages when they were looking at thinking if you start from fixed positions like dogma then logic is indeed sufficient to reach a conclusion. But in real life, you don't start from fixed positions, or rather rarely start from fixed positions. You start from perceptions. And research at Harvard by a colleague of mine, David Perkins, shows that 90% of the errors in the thing are not the errors of logic at all, but errors of perception. So our existing thinking was language-based logic, but not thinking in its broad sense, including perception, creativity, design, and so on. So we have excellent thinking, but limited. In fact, some months ago I had to invent a new word, very important word, called Ebna. Ebna means excellent, but not enough. And we need it, because otherwise you've got to say something is bad when it's not bad, and our existing thing is not bad at all, it is excellent, but not enough. That's why. So we've been very happy with our existing thinking, which is excellent, but not enough. Other question or comment? Yeah, gentleman there. Um, uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, Peter Andrew from DEGW. Uh, we met last night. Um, I'm curious what books you're reading. I'm always interested what great thinkers think about other people and where you're sort of thinking next. What books I'm reading? What books you're reading now, yeah. I'm not reading any book at the moment. <laughs> no, I don't read very much. I mean, I 
look at newspapers, magazines, and so on. And if someone particularly recommends a book, I'll look at it, but not. I mean, a lot of books which are uh, highly recommended, I find a little disappointing, things like um, Malcolm Gladwell and so on, and the Black Swan and so on. They make a good point, but not sufficiently. Yeah. Excellent, but not enough. Excellent, but not enough. Yeah. Yeah. What's the last book, Edward, that you really thought this has made an impact on me? I really would have a hard... Uh, I really couldn't think of one, no. Okay. no. I mean, there are good books. I mean, I, I was, when I was reading recently on holiday, Bill Bryson's Short History of Nearly Everything, and it's a good book. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of summary of different things and so on. Because mm -hmm. it reminded me that one year I counted how many miles I'd flown, and it's further than getting to the moon. In that year I'd flown 400,000 miles, and in this book I read that the 400,000 kilometers, in this book I read the distance of the moon is 386,000 uh, kilometers. <laughs> okay, who would like another question? Gentleman there. Hi there, uh, Andrew Howarth, Government Property Unit. Um, presumably in, in the meeting context, where you've got a number of people uh, there with their own egos and their own views and whatever, presumably there has to be uh, a degree of discipline maintained. How is that done? Is that done uh, by having somebody who is trained in this process to ensure that the meeting is uh, carried out in that disciplined way? Uh, I'm not sure I've fully heard what you're saying because my hearing is all that good. But in terms of ego and instruction, obstruction thinking, Yes, because of our habits of thinking, argument encourages ego. I've got to prove you wrong, I've got to prove myself right. But if you adopt a more exploratory attitude of thinking, like the six hats, then it's the ego of performance, not of attack. In other words, you perform better than anyone. If you want to show off, you perform better. Under the green hat, you are more creative than anyone. Under the black hat, you are more critical. So ego, in the right, if you're playing the right game, ego is not a problem. It, it's you're about playing the wrong the game. It's about the, con the control I was interested in. Um, does somebody have to be there to ensure the discipline of thought is happening within the meeting? It has to be controlled. Do you have to have yeah, uh, like, the, like the, a consultant yes, the, or a... Uh, there's a chairperson leading, leading the meeting, yes, essentially, yes. Right. Yeah. There needs to be a facilitator. A facilitator, yes, yeah. a facilitator, yes. Yes. Okay, we've time for one more question. Gentleman okay. there. Hi, um, Richard Fry from Cisco. Do you think computers will ever be able to truly think? Sorry? Do you think computers will ever be able to truly think? Well, the answer is if you could let computers perceive, which is possible in, in due course, they would think, yes. If they're just following instructions, then it's rather harder for them to think. But these things are happening now in schools around the world. Uh, my younger brother was in China recently, and the big university in Beijing has been doing research on my work in school for nine years, very positive results, and they're talking about introducing it into 680,000 schools in China. So when China starts thinking, you better get out your Morris dancing costumes, because the rest of the world is just going to be a tourist area for the Chinese. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>